Welcome back to the Subspace Games YouTube channel. Tonight we're going to be going over getting the selector object a little more integrated into the HUD and getting some functionality out of that. So let's jump in and take a look at some things. Um, I need to apologize in advance. I've been doing a lot of coding, thinking about how I want to, um, to implement this. And so I've gone back and, and I got partly down the road of one direction and then I changed my mind. Um, and we're doing something a little different. So um, if you're following the code closely, there's going to be a lot of changes and I'm not going to go over all of them. What I recommend is after this video, just go ahead and take a look at GitHub and you'll see all the current code. Um, because what I did, and let me run the game here and I'll show you. Uh, we had it before uh, where we had the mouse over would, um, would actually cause the selector to appear. And I actually wrote some code so that um, once it appeared and then your cursor left the little HUD object, it would then disappear. I started to not like the way that was working. And so what I've implemented instead is that, um, you know, you're going to click on an object or touch it if you're using touchscreen and it's going to place the selector there and then no matter what happens if you move it around um, it's going to stay on that object until you click on another object. Um, it's just a lot easier to implement this way. So uh, that's what we've got so far. Um, also I implemented the stub for the code where when you select the little circular um, handle um, the code is there so that it will en enable the rotation, but I haven't done the actual code for rotating the, the object yet. Um, and then I also added some code so that when you fire the ball, uh, it makes the um, it makes that object disappear, you know, so the selector is no longer on there until you come in and click again. So let's take a look at that. Let's go ahead and stop this. Um, well, the other thing you'll probably notice is I, I made the walls wider. Um, what I'm going to do in the eventual the um, game design or the level design is that I'm going to take a huge block and then I'm going to carve out the level from inside that. And I think that's going to make it a little bit easier because what I want to eventually do is restrict the camera movement to just the playable area. And so I want all the levels to have a, a, a maximum size that's con consistent. I also like the fact that by making the walls nice and thick, we won't have to worry so much about... Um, the collision detection and, and maybe making it through a wall because the wall is too thin based on the speed of the ball. Um, so in case you saw that and were wondering what that was about, that's that's what I'm doing. So let's jump over to, to the code. And uh, the first thing I want to show you is, um, first of all, on the mouse on mouse move in the AIMCAM AI, I just went ahead and I just axed all the code that had, um, you know, where we could select the, the, the object would appear when uh, when the mouse was over that. Instead, I went into uh, on mouse button down and I added some code down. Uh, where am I at? Okay, so when we click the button, I'm going to skip some of this code for right now. There's some stuff in here about rotation. We're going to skip down to this else block here. But um, we have this check to see if the object that we're clicking on is a movable object. So if we jump over to the code that does that, we will see that I've modified it a little bit. So once we get an, uh, an object that we can move, we're also going to create, uh, well, we're going to uh, have a handle to the object that is selected. So I created this variable, h selected object that I stuck in the AI. And we're going to also assign that to the hit object. You remember that we had um, we were assigning the object that we're moving to that handle. Where we'll, we've also said that well, this is the selected object, so we assign that. And then we're sending an event to a new event that um, that I've created, an event handler. It's called on move selector. So once we select the object, then we fire off that event, which is right here. Actually, I believe I had this code. Before, so this hasn't really changed. I just uh, moved the location of the code uh, where I fire off this event. The one thing that I did change here is I wanted to make sure that if we don't have an object selected, uh, uh, make sure that the selector object is not visible. So I put this else block. So if there's no selected object, um, then it'll set the visibility to false. Okay, so we can back out to 
the on mouse button down that takes care of that so um, if you click on an object and it's movable it'll select it and it'll also select it for moving and so um, what that does is that when we're playing the game oops let's stop that jump back over here when we're playing the game we can click to select the object but I'm also holding my mouse button down so I can immediately move the object as well um, but I can also let go and if I come back and click and hold on that object I can still move it so the the code for moving the object has not changed um, it's just uh, we've just added the selecting of the object in there um, and so then the next thing that we wanted to do um, is when are we going to hide it so when does the hide this the selector go away well I added that code into the on toggle camera so whenever we toggle the camera we're going to want to hide the object so that's this code right here um, we just basically get a handle to it and we hide it and then we select, set the um, selected object to nil so it's no longer selected in the code um, I also did it on the um, the mouse button down if you'll notice in where if we're not in editing mode and we're not moving an object and we actually launch the ball we're also going to execute this little block of code here which will hide the selector so let me take that out so that kind of covers our bases we have um, when we click on an object we select it and when we launch the ball or when we toggle the camera it's going to deselect the object and make the selector go away. So the next portion that we wanted to deal with is how do we handle the rotation? Um, and so in order to handle the rotation, I also have some code in the on the button down, which says right here that uh, we, gra we grab a handle to the rotation button in the HUD. And we just check to say, okay, if we have an object that's selected and I added this little function here called mouse over component so if, if the mouse is actually over the rotation button and we're clicking then that means we're going to set the our this little boolean flag that I created uh, rotating object to true so in other words if I click on that button then it's going to rotate the it's going to put it into rotation rotation mode so that's that's all that that is saying right there and one thing that I did, I, I kind of played around, I tried to get the HUD, um, you know, that was originally a button, uh, this code right here. Let me pull it up. Uh, select a button, okay. So, yeah, this was originally a button. It's still named a button, but what I went in and did is I changed it to a label because um, I tried using the, the button events in the HUD, but it wasn't firing right because the it looked like the the AI was handling the mouse button down before the HUD was and so since the HUD was was setting that flag and saying well, what I want to do is rotate the the object well that wasn't getting set before the mouse button was was fired off saying I want to launch the ball and so I can never rotate the object I would always get a the ball launching instead so I just created I made this a label um, set the visibility to false so that you can't see it and then I just explicitly call in the code um, you know I check to see if we're over that component and if we are then I go ahead and um, set the flag right there and um, that way it doesn't launch the ball um, it just uh, takes care of the rotation uh, as it comes up so that's something that I uh, that I had to do there um, now the next thing that I did was Okay, if we're only going to rotate as long as the as the the mouse button is clicked down, so once I click on that object, on the little handle, I hold it down and I'll be able to rotate the object. Once I let it up, I want that to stop. This thing is not working right. There we go. So on mouse button up, all I did is I added this little block. So if we're currently in rotation mode then we'll set rotation mode to false. So it's the same thing that we did with the moving the object. Um, once we're done moving the object it sets all those flags to false as well. Um,
So if we're in rotation mode, um, then when we get the on mouse move event is called, it's going to check for that. So first, you remember it checks to say, okay, are we moving an object? And if we are, it sends the um, movement off to the on mouse move and so that it, it'll move the object. Well, I've added this um, other block in here that says, okay, um, if we're not moving an object, then let's check to see if we're rotating. If we are, it's going to send an event to the movable AI on the um, you know movable object, and it's going to be the event on rotate object. And it's basically the same thing. Um, I'm passing in the same values, but the difference is uh, this event is specifically tailored to handle rotating the object. Um, and you can see that I didn't finish doing the code yet because it was just getting, there were too many changes I was doing. Things were getting too complex and I was losing my place. So I wanted to get these videos done so I had a good stopping point. So you can see I've started, I'm, I'm getting the average frame time so that I can do a smooth rotation. Um, and then I've grabbed the center of the currently uh, selected object, the X, Y, and Z coordinates. So what I'll do next is I'll calculate the rotation vector based on where uh, the difference between the center of the object and where the, the mouse cursor currently is. Um, that'll, I can draw a line from both those points and it'll give me a vector that'll represent the rotation of the object and then we'll rotate the object. And so it's there, I just need to go through and, and finish that up. Um, so that's basically all I took care of at that point, but I think we're making a little bit further along uh, with getting this finished here um, as far as being able to control the objects. Um, apologizes if, if this is dragging out a little bit. It just it seems like you know every time I get down a certain path, I go, you know what? I don't I don't know if I want to work it that way. What if we change it and, and do it this way? And so it takes me quite a bit to to. It may not be a lot of code that I'm presenting in the video, but the amount of coding and the work that I had to do to get up to that point was pretty significant. Um, but I like that you can select it, um, select the object, you can move the object around, um, you know, you'll be able to click on the little thing and rotate it around. Um, so we're getting pretty close, I think, um, to having the functionality there. I know I keep saying that, but um, the other thing I wanted to do, it's kind of a side note, is I noticed that when the ball would hit the trampoline, um, it would bounce up by a set amount. So I was always adding like you know, uh, force of 10 to the ball. I think that obviously when it comes to a trampoline, um, the faster you hit the trampoline or the springboard, uh, the more force is going to be applied to the ball. So we're going to scale that a little bit. That's just a little side note. I noticed it when it hit that springboard there as we, as we launched the ball. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I apologize. I'm a bit scatterbrained on this one. Um, I just, I, like I said, I've done a lot of work on it and had to back up quite a bit. Um, so the future view videos, now that I have uh, kind of a clear direction on where I want to go, uh, the future videos are going to be a lot easier, um, a lot better. Please leave some comments. Um, I know I say this all the time, but the more feedback I get, the better. Um, there's several people that um, have really been helping me out and doing a lot of, um, uh, leaving a lot of comments, a lot of feedback, and I really appreciate that. It's, it's meant a lot to me. Um, had another donation. I really appreciate that. Uh, I haven't asked the person uh, whether or not I can use their name, so I'm going to keep it anonymous and just say that, you know, I really appreciate that donation. Um, it, it really helps to keep me going. Um, and so please support the site, whether it's by leaving comments or feedback or playing the game or clicking on ads, whatever it is that you feel that, that you can do. Every little bit counts. And uh, we'll see you next time.